In this video, we're going to take a look at splitting out an aileron from a wing on a remote controlled jet model. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with the Rebel Max model that's provided by a subscriber. So, once again, I'm not going to be providing this in the link in the description. However, in this model, we're going to take a look at splitting out the aileron from the wing. And specifically, we want to talk about how we can adjust the front edge shape of this so that way it can rotate up and down. Now, splitting away portions of a solid body is something that we have done before, but sometimes they can be tricky, especially when you're dealing with complex shapes. So we're going to go ahead and hop in and take a look at splitting this up. And just like with most of my videos, I'm going into this for the first time. There's I haven't really done this before on this model, so any challenges we come upon are something that you would typically run into when you're doing this on your own. So to get started, I'm going to create a new sketch from the top. And the way that I like to work this is I like to select the entire body and project it. Now you can go to project, include and project, and there is an entire body option, which allows you to select the body. And this will give you the silhouette or the outside of that body. This is extremely helpful when we're trying to figure out where the edges or the ends of our sketch is going to be. Another thing that this is helpful for is to figure out the angle at which you're cutting away. So for example, I might want to go ahead and use offset. And instead of offsetting an entire chain, I just want to grab this back edge and offset it inward. Now, this is a great option if you are confident in the underlying geometry. Now, what I mean by that is if the underlying edge of that wing was a line, then what you're offsetting here is going to be a line. It's going to be a true line. You can make stuff parallel to it or collinear to it. If this edge came from a translated form body, that can be a little bit trickier because you might end up with some sections where it's waving up and down. Now, you might be thinking, why does that really matter? Well, in the end, it might not matter. But where you start to run into issues or problems when you get into doing things like trying to add fillets or chamfers to edges, if you don't have a clean edge to do that, it can potentially raise some problems. Now this looks okay visually because it's just one edge that I selected. So I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to see if it works. So I offset it 60 millimeters. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some vertical lines. And I'm going to do another one over here. And then I'm going to decide where these need to be. So we'll hit escape to get off of our line tool. And I'll just drag the endpoints until they snap to my offset. And now I can drag them left and right and figure out where I want this aileron to be. So at this point, I'm going to use my dimension tool, which is D on the keyboard. And I'm going to figure out how wide these need to be. I'm just going to sort of make up some numbers. I don't really know how wide these need to be. But I also want to determine where it's going to be relative to the edge of my wing. In this case, I'm going to say 350. Now in Fusion, we don't have to completely enclose this area. We don't have to snap these to the end and, uh, and worry about having that complete closed profile. As long as we have the edges that are overlapping, then we'll be able to use that as a cut. But what I want to do is I want to actually close this off and I'm going to make this horizontal and just give it some arbitrary dimension so that it's at least outside of the wing. So in this case, I'm going to just say 100 millimeters and that should do it. The next thing that I want to do is I want to think about the fact that we are cutting out an exact fit here. We need to think about tolerances. We need to think about how much space we want between this portion, the aileron that we're pulling out, and the rest of the wing. Now, you can do this here by simply offsetting this. The reason that this might be tricky is because now we don't have a closed profile where we can offset this front edge. So you can see it's only going to be able to take this because it's not a uh, this line doesn't end here. And once you start trimming some of these edges, once you start trimming things that you've projected or offset, then you start to run into issues. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to turn this into a construction line. So using my construction geometry, and then I'm going to use a true straight line from point to point. That'll give me this closed profile in here, and then I can use offset now and I can take this entire profile here, including my new line, and I can offset it inward, whatever amount I need for my tolerance. In this case, I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'm going to say two millimeters, and then we're going to finish. So what we want to do is we want to split the body, and then we want to go back and use the sketch again to remove the material from the wing itself. So we're going to start with split body. 
I'm going to select the body to split, which in this case is the wing. And then my splitting tool is going to be the inside edge. Now, the reason I want to use the inside edge is because that's going to be the portion that we're going to keep for the aileron. So I'm going to go ahead and note that it automatically came in with the same name, W1, but now it has brackets and a 1. I need to go find the sketch that I use, which is going to be all the way at the bottom of this, uh, this line of sketches, and I'm going to make it visible again. This time I'm going to use extrude, and I'm going to select this outside profile. Now if you ever have trouble with this because of some overlapping solid body, hold down Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and then you can simply drag this up. I'm going to use symmetric. We could do through all for the distance, uh, and that would go just all the way through that wing. And objects to cut, we're going to make sure that we are just cutting away from the wing. Now notice what's happening here is it's cutting away from W11, which was the aileron piece that we broke out. At least that's what we think it is. Now, in some cases, when you do a split body, the smaller piece might end up taking the original name. And then this piece here might be the larger portion that we're assuming has that original name. So just double check on those kinds of things. Now on the bottom of my sketch folder, I'm going to go ahead and just hide that. Uh, also a quick note, we've done this before, but if you have a lot of sketches like this, and, and once you get into a design, it's not uncommon to have hundreds of sketches, you can right click and do find in browser, and it'll go ahead and automatically find it for you, a little bit quicker for you to hide it that way, or, or to find it if you need to do something with it. So let's minimize this. And now we've got the aileron here, and it's got enough of a gap between it and the wing that we can feel confident that manufacturing tolerances, 3D printing, whatever the case is, that we have enough room here. However, we still need it to rotate up and down. And the, the way that we're going to do this is we could come in and we could just try to add a fillet to this. Now, if you go to fillet and you change this to full round, you can select uh, the top and the bottom. And in some cases, you can get a full round doesn't really like it when you have a complex shape like this, especially when that outside face wraps all the way around. So that's likely not going to work in a case like this. You could try to do a regular fillet and get this round here, and that might be okay for what you're doing. Uh, again, it kind of depends. This might be an okay solution. I'm not going to do this for, for this example, but we're going to say OK, and we're just going to take a look. And that might give you everything you need. And if that's the case, that's probably the shortest or quickest way. If that doesn't work, the next thing that you can do is you think about the fact that this back face here and these side faces are truly planar. We can sketch on them and we can use them. So what we can do is we can create a sweep or a cut that can be used on these. You have to think about where the pivot point is going to be. So I'm going to right click and create a sketch. And notice that we are dealing with something that is not necessarily going to be a consistent height or a consistent thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to find the middle, which is that triangle, and I'm going to bring this back. Then I'm going to use my circle tool, which is C on the keyboard. And I'm going to sort of make this arbitrary pivot point. And I'm going to make it snap here, which is going to give me a tangency, essentially a tangency with that edge. And then I'm going to drag this. I want to make this large enough so that it's tangent with the outside. Now, you might find that you need to come in and use the tangency option. And notice that it goes away. It doesn't allow us to do that. Now, a way that we can get around this is by going to create point. And let's just make some points on here. And then we can make that point coincident with the outside. That's not a true tangency but sometimes you can get away with uh, making that work. You can see in this case, it's not going to work. It's not going to allow that to work. So what we need to do is we need to think long and hard about that pivot point. Now, I, I'm not going to pretend to be some sort of expert on remote control um, you know, airplanes or anything like that. So I don't know exactly where this pivot point needs to be placed, but I do know that we need to figure out where it is, and then we need to make some sort of vertical reference. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to give this line a dimension. I'm going to say this pivot point needs to be 10 millimeters back. I'm going to turn that into construction, which is X on the keyboard, or you can use this line type option in the sketch palette. And then I'm going to make another line. And this line is going to be vertical. I'm just going to go ahead and make two just for simplicity's sake. Uh, and also the rest of this uh, fuselage here, we don't really need that. So we can get we can hide some of this other stuff that we really don't need to see. Get rid of the cockpit. 
and let's find this piece here get rid of the intake that we did and the rest of the stuff doesn't really need to be here so anything that is kind of in the way visually I'm just going to go ahead and hide and it looks like everything everything there's pretty good okay so now we've got this circle here which is going to represent our pivot and we've got this vertical reference line which is going to be 10 millimeters back from this edge remember that's where we trimmed it out of the wing and also we need to think about the diameter of this circle which is based on this 10 millimeter line so it's 20 millimeter diameter circle so these edges can snap to the top and the bottom and those can be references for the pivot point now what we need to do here is we need a transition from this position to right here and then back to here so i'm going to do this with tangency i'm going to try to make this tangent with this outside edge and notice that it's not allowing it we might need to try to project it even though we've already used this as our sketch plane you can see that uh, what we want to do is we want to try to just bring this individual edge here and see if we can use it for um, specifically for tangency with this edge so we'll try to select this tangency goes away another way that we can try to do this is by adjusting the handle and sometimes the handle will be able to have tangency if that's not the case then what i'm going to do is i'm going to snap the handle to that reference edge it's not really a great way to do it it's kind of like a last resort but this will help us control the tangency direction and then here in the middle where we've got that point what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this one and just make it vertical so what we're doing here is we're trying to make a cutout a, a relief cut here so we're going to adjust the handle until it looks roughly rounded so we're, we're trying to get it as close to this round shape as possible and we want to make sure that and you can see this handle on the top has now gone away let's do Control z undo we want to make sure that we don't get a, too far away from it so you can see at some point it's it's kind of snapping and we don't want that uh, so that's unfortunately going to cause us a problem i'm just going to do a little by little and see if it's okay uh, that looks to be okay do this one little by little and if it snaps i'm just going to undo it so what's typically what's happening is it's trying to snap to some sort of persistent constraint that it thinks it's it's trying to jump to and it's not actually in this case it's not helpful sometimes you can hold down control or command on the mac to override those and be okay in this case it seems to be working okay obviously you can see now the fillet was probably the best option but let's keep going with this and let's see what we can do with it so now that we've got this section we could theoretically take this and do something like a sweep cut so we could take this profile we could just go along this edge here so for our path we'll select this edge and and cut it away now in a lot of cases that'll work but then you'll be left with this little remnant now, fusion's pretty good about direct modeling so we could select that and hit delete and in a lot of cases it will be able to patch it in this case you can see that it does unfortunately leave it there uh, it just does not want to remove it so um, that's not really going to be the best option so we're going to get rid of that sweep we're going to bring back our old sketch which again is at the very bottom of the sketch folder let's go ahead and scroll all the way down and once again these are sort of the design decisions that you run into so we're going to start a sketch on the other side once again we're going to do a circle we're going to do a line to the midpoint here that's going to be horizontal we're going to give it a 10 millimeter dimension just like the other side and that's going to control uh, this 20 millimeters assuming that we snap them together so we're going to make those two coincident and now we've got our 20 millimeter circle it's going to be a vertical line reference here and a vertical line reference here so now we have all of those references we've got this section over here we can do our uh, spline just like we did before from top to mid to bottom and then we can try snapping these endpoints of the tangency control handles and then starting to control that shape so once again it's not a perfect solution it's not ideal uh, in an ideal world what we would do is we'd have a little bit more control over the wing shape 
Uh, the wing potentially needs to be a little bit different shape to make this a, a bit more consistent, but it, this is a solution that we have. All right, so now that we have those on both sides, what we can do is we can try to do a loft cut. So we're gonna loft uh, this shape here, this profile shape, all the way over to uh, this profile shape. Now let's actually go back and get rid of that piece. We only wanna do this piece here. And those will go from one side to the other. Where this is going to get tricky is you can kind of see there's a little bit of a marbling that happens in the middle. Now this is because we're leaving a little bit of material here. What we could do is we could make this a little bit larger profile. We could say okay and see if it works. Sometimes uh, Fusion will, will patch it and you can see it left that little sliver up top, but delete worked okay. So this gives us that rounded edge on the top. Now, again, a fillet probably would have been just fine for this. You can see that this takes a whole lot of extra work, but if you need to have a really specific pivot point and you want all this geometry to go directly around that, then this is probably one of those scenarios where you would do this. The other thing I will say, and I'm just gonna roll back before the sweep and that delete. Uh, the other thing I will say is if you do have a specific pivot point, so for example, if we were to start a new sketch, once again, I'm gonna go right from the mid the midline of this. I'm gonna come back. Um, let's go ahead and do, we'll do 10 millimeters again, just to keep it consistent. So D on the keyboard, uh, 10 millimeters. And let's go ahead and just make those coincidence. So we're back where we were essentially. Another thing that you could do with this is you could basically recreate the wing shape split the wing up until this pivot point and have a perfectly round shape here. So if we were to say, come back and maybe work our way back around the, uh, the edge of this wing until maybe here and we come back, uh, what we can do is we can try to work out this wing shape by using our splines and then making sure that we do have tangency with this circle. And we'll do the same thing down here. Uh, and what this allows us to do is it allows us to build out this profile of the wing, and we can do the same thing on the other side. And in this case, I'm just going to do an extrude, and we'll do it as a we'll do it as a new body just so we can see it. Uh, but essentially, what this allows us to do is it allows us to build out the shape that we need, uh, you know, the shape of that wing profile that we need with a perfect pivot point in the front, and then we would do a loft from one side to the other. But again, you have to really think about those pivot points because if they are going to be concentric in the same location inside of the, the overall shape of the wing, then it gets a little bit trickier. And once again, I, I can't pretend to know exactly what is needed in this case, but I will say that there are several ways that we can go about this. Uh, for me, likely what I would do is I would do the fillet route just because it's a little bit easier. We can change the fillet type to be curvature based instead of uh, tangency. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't based on your radius values. We can also change the radius type to be a chord length. Uh, again, these will, will require different values. So 17 millimeters is gonna be probably uh, too big. So I'm gonna go down to 10 maybe. Let's go up to uh, 15. You can see we're getting a little bit closer here. Maybe 16 will be okay, but 17 was a bit too much. And that way we, we can get sort of that, uh, that shape and that profile that we're looking for. Uh, so once again, many different ways that we can go about doing this, but you kind of have to pick and choose your battles depending on your requirements. And if you're driving something based off of a pivot point, for example, then you would need to spend a little bit more time on both ends of the shape to build out where those pivots are and how you're gonna transition that cut on the front. In most cases, you'll probably be okay, especially if you're 3D printing, to use something like a fillet on that front edge. But at this point, I think that's as far as I'm going to go with this. If you have any questions on any of those different techniques that we looked at, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.